So I'm David Ngaro, I'm a director of photography, I'm French, uh, coming from Paris. The lens gives you felt there's something that you can't really, uh, you can change, but it's, it's for me it's texture. And then a focus fall off. Um, I'm not too, I don't care really about definition and these things, I think there's too much already. So um, that's why I'm going more towards older lenses for some projects. Maybe on my next project, I'm going to take, you know, super new lens because I think it fits the story. So we were on an Alexa Mini um, for obvious reasons of handheld and, and having the smallest camera possible. Um, shooting RAW, shooting on Zeiss um, high-speed Mark IIs, so the ones from 85, 86, something like that. Sometimes it's very obvious. You know, this kind of film calls for that kind of lens. Like this film, uh, Prayer Before Dawn, I knew I wanted a small set of lenses, fast, not too soft. I could have gone with the K35s, but I think they would flare too much. Um, so the high-speed Mark II's were an obvious choice. On some of the films, it's harder. You, I do test uh, on the film, not my last film, but the one before we tested, I don't know, five or six different sets. For me, it's a lot on texture, um, looking at the skin tone, the rendition, how it is. I like to have kind of my 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 um, soft filter included in the lens, in a way. And I can see how versatile they are. If I flare them a lot, how does that look? The difference also between shooting at, at like a T4 to 8.5.4, and then if you go wide open, how soft you go and the difference like this, how, you, how it holds contrast when you're really like facing windows, little things like that, that gives you the, you know, the texture of the lens, the character of the lens. And it, um, uh, and we, we talk with the director about, you know, what kind of emotion we want from the image and go with this. Obviously it's different if it's a gritty film in, you know, a cop movie in New York or if you're shooting a period movie, so it's just, making sense. Which doesn't mean that you have to match. You can do a period movie with very modern lenses. It could be interesting as well. I'm very much into perspective and camera distance to, to characters now. Really trying to keep that distance and keep your lens. Um, usually I do the films with two lenses. Most of the film is done, like this film it was done with 25 and 35. And this choice of creating um, a bond between audience and character and how you play with this instead of just changing lenses all the time. But again, those are um, character-driven movies, single or two main characters that you have to follow. If you do a spy movie and you have people spying each other from across the, you know, the street or the city, you need, you need different tools. After that, I work in a very traditional way. You know, I have my LUTs, my lookup tables in camera. We should row and, and we process the, the row, you know, for the dailies. And basically I could show you, you know, grabs from the dailies and you look at the final image of the film. It's really close. Um, trust yourself. Confidence is important. If you think something is good, it's good. Just go for it. Then you learn. If you step back too much, you know, digitalize is a good thing is you see what you are doing as opposed to back in film years when you were waiting for the, the call from the lab saying if everything was okay or not on the next day. Now you see, so just push it. Just push it, find your, your style and don't be afraid of, don't, don't listen too much of the guys like me saying I use this, I use that. Yeah, but it's, it's good for me now, tomorrow I'll change. So just experimenting. This time of experimenting, it's hard to get. So when you're young and you're doing like student movies and you can do anything, well, just do it. You'll learn more than anything else. Mm.